let's talk about Audi's very special front axle design. A construction which is so complex that competitors needed years to understand it. To understand how we got here, a little history dive. Let's go back to the 1930s and to the brands of the Auto Union. Horch and Audi were known for their luxury cars with rear-wheel drive. Also, Wanderer produced mid-size cars with rear-wheel drive. Only DKW, the former largest motorcycle manufacturer in the world, started producing cars with front-wheel drive to create simple and cheap cars. These cars were very popular and the cheapest in Germany, before the heavily subsidized Beetle came on the market. The DKWs were not interesting for the German military, as they had wooden bodies and two-stroke engines, which created large clouds the enemy could see. So, at the end of the war, many DKWs were left over, and when parts of the Auto Union company moved from Chemnitz to Zwickau to the American sector to Ingolstadt, they of course started with repairing old DKWs. Also new cars were based on the F9 pre-war design, and so DKW, the only brand left of the Auto Union, stayed an established brand with front-wheel drive. In 1958, they were struggling a lot, because they still held on to the two-stroke engines, which customers didn't want anymore, and they were bought by Mercedes. Mercedes gave their newly designed four-cylinder four-stroke engine to Auto Union, so they have a proper four-stroke engine to start with. But the name DKW was already damaged too much, and they changed the name to Audi, and Mercedes sold the company to VW in 1965. So this is how we got here. We have Audi cars with front-wheel drive, although Audi before the merger to Auto Union was known for rear-wheel drive. And we have inline engines which hang in front of the front axle, the old DKW F9 design. Check out my other videos with the links below to learn more about this. So in the 1980s, Audis used Macpherson front axle designs like many other manufacturers. The Macpherson design is super simple, has less parts and is widely used until today. But there are a couple of problems with this design. First of all, the steering axis cannot be brought closer to the wheel center, because the wheel is in the way. And the center offset is a lever arm which lets you feel acceleration, braking and cornering forces in the steering. Another problem is that because acceleration and braking forces go through the coilover, the damper rod has to be a lot thicker, and hence there is less space for the piston with its valves inside the damper, so damping is worse. And the damper's diameter shouldn't be increased, because otherwise you don't have enough space to the wheel. And because the driving forces go through the damper, the piston is pushed against the damper wall, which means more friction, and hence less accurate damping. That's okay for most mass production cars, but if you intend to become a premium brand like Audi under Piech, that's not good enough. So the task was design a front axle for the brand new Audi A8 D2, which gets rid of all these disturbances and problems, no matter what. And what the Audi engineers came up with was incredible. They started with a double wishbone suspension, the easiest design and a good basis. But they couldn't position the steering axle as far outboard as they wanted, because either the wheel was in the way, or the steering axle was angled too much, which results in other effects they didn't want. So the idea was, let's split each wishbone into two independent arms, so four connection points on the wheel carrier. The result of this was now, that the steering axis was defined by the intersection points of the suspension arms in space. It's a virtual axis. Big advantage was now that they could position the steering axis exactly where they wanted it to be and reduced the disturbances lever arm or center offset from 66 mm down to just 10 mm. So there was no noticeable disturbances in the steering anymore. Other advantage was that the damper was now completely isolated from acceleration or braking forces, so the damper rod could be a lot thinner, internal resistance was lower, and there was more room for damper piston and its valves, which resulted in a lot more comfort. Another side effect was that the wheel needs a lot less space while turning, which means the wheel arch can be smaller, and hence there is more space in the interior. But also camber, caster and all other settings could now be changed in every situation and that's what made this front axle so complex. But Audi worked on this for a long time and found exactly what they were looking for. And of course, suspension arms were full aluminium components. Later on, also the wheel carrier was made from aluminium. 
The upper two suspension arms are fixed with one very famous screw which every mechanic hates because it's always a pain to get it out and I just recently had to remove it as well on my VW Phaeton to change the upper suspension arms. Until 2007 it was called the forelink suspension, with the steering rack sitting on top of the gearbox behind the middle of the wheel, the old DKW F9 design. But because the steering rack was fixed to the chassis while the front axle was fixed to a damped subframe, the steering could feel a bit unprecise. And with the wish for new cars with precise handling, Audi changed the design with the Audi A4 B8 in 2007. Now the subframe was bolted directly to the chassis and the steering rack was moved down to the subframe. So track rods act as a fifth suspension arm on each side. Hence the suspension is now called, until today, five arm suspension. In the 1990s this design left the competition stunned and was not just used in the 1994 A8 but also in the 1994 A4 and shortly after in the A6. The design is so good and popular that it's widely used until today in all brands of the VW group including Porsche, Lamborghini and Bentley. So I hope you like this little look back in history and check out my other videos for more geeky car tech. See you at the next video.